Before we dive into the episode, I want to ask you something. How would it feel to be able to get up each morning knowing that you call the shots? That you can live and work when, where, how, and with whom you choose? That you get to reap all the benefits of your own talent and expertise and are no longer slaving for someone else's dream, but living your own? You get all this and more with a digital business. And if you'd love to start one but have no idea where to begin, then I have something just for you. I've created a free resource called the Digital Business Quick Start Guide. By downloading this guide, you'll discover my simple digital business launch formula that will help you design your business fundamentals and learn what you need to do next to get your business launched fast. So head on over to nicolohara.com forward slash quick start hyphen guide, or you'll find the link in the show notes to download your guide now and get started on your way to finding the freedom and success only a digital business can give you. Do it now. Don't waste another second of your time that you could be planning your digital business launch. Your future self will thank you. Now go and enjoy the episode. I'm taking a break from my usual episode this week because of the sad news we had yesterday from Buckingham Palace in London about the passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II after 70 years on the throne. It's one of those once-in-a-lifetime moments that you just need to pause and think about. Now, although Her Majesty was 96 and we all knew the day would come when we'd lose her, it was still a shock when the news actually came out. I think somehow we thought she would just go on forever. And the outpouring of messages of condolence and praise for Her Majesty from all over the world shows that she was the one person who truly transcended politics and other traditional divides. And for most people, her departure is a great loss and will have an impact of some sort, whether that is big or small. Personally, I'm surprised how emotional I really feel about it. I have to confess, I did shed a tear when I heard the news. I think it's not only the passing of someone in the public eye who's had a huge impact on history, but also that she's just always been around. For anyone under 70, she's just been there all our lives. Whatever happens in the world, or or in our personal lives, she was there in the background. So now it feels so strange to have lost that person who was the link with the past and the thread that wound through all our lives. It really is the end of an era. So my dad was a big fan of the Queen and one of his favourite photos was of my sister Liz meeting the Queen in Buckingham Palace in 2003. So Liz had been attending a drinks reception and started chatting to a lady who turned out to be lady-in-waiting for the Queen. And after a while chatting, Liz saw the lady-in-waiting nod her head towards another woman who was standing with the Queen, who then guided Her Majesty over to speak with my sister. And Liz spent a few minutes speaking with the Queen, who she said was tiny, very charming and friendly, and asked thoughtful questions, and was just like a kindly grandmother and put everyone at ease. And that seems to be the general feeling when you hear about all the stories of people who've met her. She was always gracious, kind and considerate when meeting people. But she was also a leader, And let's not forget, started at a time when women had very little place in leadership or business positions. In fact, their intellect and ability were seen as inferior to men. She was a housewife with two children and then was propelled into being head of state at the age of 25. She had what was effectively a huge business to run, one she never retired from. So there's a lot we can learn from her as a leader. Firstly, she stuck by her commitments. When she was 21, she made a speech to the Commonwealth. She said, I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service. And that's exactly what she did, working and fully in control into the, until the day before her death. She led with kindness and respect. Those who worked for and with her had nothing but good things to say about their time with her. She was hugely resilient during the well-known ups and downs of the royal family and once said, when life seems hard, The courageous do not lie down and accept defeat. Instead, they are all the more determined to struggle for a better future. She also said, The world is not the most pleasant place. Eventually your parents will leave you and nobody's going to go out of their way to protect you unconditionally. You need to learn to stand up for yourself and what you believe and sometimes, pardon my language, kick some ass. She really made her mark, her impact in the world and will leave a legacy that goes on for generations. She never gave up on her mission, her drive to do what she said she'd do, her unshakable belief in herself and what she was doing 
for her family and the people of the UK and the Commonwealth, and in some ways, the rest of the world. Thank you, ma'am, for your inspiration, your strength and your service. You truly were the ultimate female leader.